Hey math students, let's take a little uh, another look at uh, polar coordinates. And in particular, what I want to do is I want to look at polar functions, okay? Functions using polar variables. We're really familiar with functions using uh, Cartesian or rectangular variables. And, uh, and you, may, you may be thinking, yeah, those are serving me really, really well. What's the point of writing uh, functions using polar variables? Well, the point is that some graphs are much easier, much more easily described using polar variables, and other graphs are much more easily described using Cartesian variables. So uh, let's look at a few uh, graphs of uh, using polar variables. And in particular, behind me, I wrote one uh, equation that is theta equals negative pi over 3. What would that look like if I were to graph this equation? Well, remember, I have two variables. There's r, and r tells me how far away I am from the origin. And then there's theta, which tells me what direction I'm pointing in. If it says theta is negative pi over 3, okay, let me think. Pi over 3 is pointing in that direction, so negative pi over 3 would be pointing in this direction, okay? So down here like this. Now, how many units am I, away am I? Uh, <laughs> it doesn't say. R can be anything, which means every single point on this ray is in the graph. As a matter of fact, R can also be negative, which means we can also go in this direction. And what we end up having is a straight line going through the origin. So whenever you have theta equals constant, the graph is going to look like a straight line going through the origin. Much like if we have, uh, uh, think about Cartesian coordinates. If you have x equals a number, you just get a straight line going uh, uh, vertically. If you have y equals a number, you have a straight line going horizontally. Well, here, if you have theta equals some constant, it's going to look not necessarily horizontal or vertical. It's going to, it can be any slope you want, but that slope, well, any slope that it says, but it's always going to go through the origin. All right, now let's look at uh, what happens if you have r equals a constant. Uh, and let's let that constant be, uh, let's have r equal uh, 6, okay? So if r equals 6, that means this is all the points that are exactly uh, 6 units away from the origin. Well, all the points that are exactly a certain number of units, a certain number of units away from a certain point, that's the definition of a circle. So this is just a circle around the origin with radius of 6. That's what that graph is going to look like. Hmm. All right. The bigger the, your constant that, the R, that R is, the bigger your circle, the smaller, the smaller. And bizarrely enough, this would also be the graph of R equals negative 6. Think about it. Okay. No matter what uh, direction you're pointing in, if you back up 6 units, you'll also be on that circle. All right. Uh, let's look at yet another one. And let's have this one be a little more, uh, a, li a little less straightforward. Let's have r equals negative 2 times the cosine of theta. Okay. Um, hmm. All right, so this time I have a theta and an r. And so what I'm going to do is, uh, the same thing that I used to do when I was just getting used to graphing with x and y, I'm going to make a little table. So theta and r. Okay. And what are some thetas? Well, there's 0, pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 2, uh, 2 pi over 3, 5 pi over 6, pi. That'll get me going. Um, can you all see this down here? Oh, I'm not sure you can. Hang on a second. Let me make it further up here. Okay. Uh, so, like I said, I'm doing 0, pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 2, 2 pi over 3, 5 pi over 6, and pi. And so now I want to see what is r going to be. Okay, cosine of 0 is 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2 times negative 2 is negative root 3. 
cosine of uh, pi over 3 is 1 half times negative 2 is negative 1. And the cosine of pi over 2 is 0 times it doesn't matter is 0. Okay? Cosine of 2 pi over 3 is negative 1 half times negative 2 is positive 1. Cosine of pi over 3 is, or sorry, of 5 pi over 6 is uh, negative root 3 over 2 times negative 2 is uh, positive root 3. And the cosine of pi is negative 1 times negative 2 is 2. All right? I know I did that kind of fast, but you, you know that stuff. So now let's, uh, let's see if we can graph this monster. Um, so I'm going to say this is one unit away and this is two units away. It's not, it's not the most perfect graph in the world. Okay, so zero, negative two. Um, zero is in that direction and negative two means I would back up two units. I'm going to be over here. Pi over six, sort of in that direction. Negative root three. Okay, so the square root of three is about 1.7 or so. So negative 1.7 is going to put me right around there. Uh, pi over three and negative one. So pi over three is pointing this way. Negative one, I'm going to back up to right there. Pi over two, I'm going this way. And zero, well that just puts me at the origin. 2 pi over 3, I'm now going this way, and I'm going 1 unit, so that puts me right about in there. 5 pi over 6, now I'm going in this direction, and I'm going about 1.7 again, so that's going to be like yeah, yeah, there or so. And pi and 2, now I'm over here, and I'm on that point again. So it's going to be something kind of like this, something vaguely circular, uh, with... Uh, yeah, okay. So now, let me see if I can actually convert this to Cartesian coordinates, and that way I'll be able to see uh, what this would be using x's and y's. So let's remember, what did we do? What equations did we use? We had four equations that were very, very helpful, and those are uh, r squared equals x squared plus y squared, uh, the tangent of theta is y over x, x equals r cosine of theta, and y equals r sine of theta. Those are the four equations that we use to help us, the four identities, I'll say, that we use to help us go back and forth between uh, r and theta and x and y. So, uh, let's see, if I had r equals negative 2 times the cosine of theta. Well, I'm going to do a little trick. I'm going to multiply both sides times r squared. And there's a reason why I'm going to do that. Sorry, I'm going to multiply both sides times r. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to get r squared here, and I'm going to get negative 2 times r cosine of theta here. And I know what r squared is. It's x squared plus y squared. And I know what r cosine of theta is. It's x. So that gets me negative 2x. And now I have an equation that's written totally in x's and y's. And uh, let me just go down here. Uh, this is the same thing as saying x squared plus y squared plus 2x equals 0. Hey, I know what that is. That's a circle, okay? That's a circle written in general form. And as a matter of fact, if I complete the square on this thing, I would get uh, x squared plus 2x plus 1 plus y squared equals 1 which means x plus 1 squared plus y squared equals 1. This is a circle centered at the point negative 1, 0 with a radius of 1. And sure enough, that looks like a circle uh, centered at negative 1, 0 with a radius of 1. <laughs> it works. Crazy, huh? Uh, well, shoot, now I want to go back and I want to look at those other ones and see... Uh, could I just use algebra to go from polar coordinates to uh, uh, Cartesian coordinates that way? And the answer is, yes, I can. Let's look back at the first one we did again. Uh, we had uh, theta, let's see, it was theta equals, what was it again? Theta equals negative pi over 3, okay? Now, if I want to write this using x's and y's, what I would do is I would say, Oh, shoot. <laughs> yeah. R squared equals x squared plus y squared. Tangent of theta equals y over x. 
uh, y equals r sine of theta and x equals r cosine of theta. I forgot, I did not mean to erase that. Because I'm going to use those to change this to uh, Cartesian coordinates. So as I'm looking at this, okay, I got theta here. If I take the tangent, let me take the tangent of both sides. So the tangent of theta is going to equal the tangent of negative pi over 3. Well, I happen to know what that is. That's uh, negative square root of 3. And tangent of theta, that's just y over x. And so this means y equals negative square root of 3 times x. And sure enough, if you think about what that graph looked like, it was a graph uh, going through the origin with a negative slope, and that's exactly what we have right there. And now let's look at the second one we looked at, which was r equals 6. Okay? r equals 6. And if you remember, this gave us a circle with radius of 6. Okay, well, let's see. Um, how about I just square both sides? And I say r squared equals x squared, uh, sorry, equals 36. And r squared is x squared plus y squared equals 36. And shoot, I'm done. Okay? Because that is a circle that is uh, centered at the origin with a radius of 6. Okay? So, what do you get out of this video? Well, what you get is an introduction, just an inkling of how one graphs something using polar coordinates. And you also get a little introduction, an inkling, of how you convert from polar functions into uh, functions using rectangular coordinates. In the next video, we're going to go backwards and we're going to start with functions using x and y's, and we're going to go to functions using uh, thetas and r's. Okay? Till then. Bye-bye.